Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the March 1v1 2019 tournament. Or March 2019 1v1 tournament. Hang on. Nope, that's. I did not get it backwards in the actual description. Good! So, we have a lot of people playing. I'm very glad. 15 people signed up, and we are going to be getting our first game going on with Wesley versus Pet Turtle. This is, of course, as usual, a Swiss tournament, and we will be starting out with. It will be shift. It will be. Rogue's River will be the first map, but as was the case with the previous tournament, players get to choose one of three maps, so this is going to be Rogue's River, but if we end up getting into other matches, as sometimes we do in the case of Swiss, don't be surprised if there are different maps. But we are starting out with Wesley versus Pet Turtle on Rogue's River, and that is going to be interesting because I figure given the bracket is probably the most even match, but we'll find out. Rogue's River, on the other hand, is a giant level. Absolutely massive. And I've actually never seen it in a 1v1 context. I've only ever seen it played in teams. I've only ever seen it played in teams. Not 1v1. Just... So I'm curious how this is actually going to pan out, because really, when you think about it, if it's 1v1 and you have four star locations, where the heck is Pet Turtle even starting out? I'm actually not sure if these are shuffled. Wow, this is actually interesting, because this... So this could be any length of game. Now, I mean, I know it sounds kind of weird. It's like, what do you mean? Why is it so special? Well, Zero K doesn't have a whole lot of maps with multiple start locations. So, yeah, this is actually a thing. Anyway, looks like Wesley is going to be starting out with Rovers and Pet Turtle also Rovers, which flat map like this, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean, the map... map will work off with that. So, Wesley... Wesley, is a, Wesley and Pet Turtle are both players that I've casted a fair bit of, though not as much recently. They have been playing quite a bit in the last little while. I kind of expect to see this not be too one-sided, but at the same time, I'm thinking Wesley is probably a slight favorite. Like, I feel like they are more a little more likely to win. But only slightly. Pet Turtle starting out with a fairly economic start. Wesley, or rather, fairly energy-intensive start, I should say. Wesley, on the other hand, going for quick radar and quick metal. Which I kind of agree with. And the thing is, right now, because of the way that the economy system works, like you start with six metal and eight energy, it does make a bit more sense to go for another expansion of metal before really building up energy infrastructure, just because you have a fair amount of energy infrastructure. You have the reserves to work with. If you're getting a bit of metal, it's not going to excess for a while, so you should be fine. But Pet Turtle, they will be able to go forward with Reclaim if they have to. That'll be a lot easier the way they're playing. So I'm guessing Pet Turtle is going to be playing a little bit for defense, just considering the way they have set up right now. They have the Dark going up forward, haven't really done a whole lot of damage with it. Well, at the same time, they have the Scorcher up at the base, just in case anything tries to come in from Wesley. Because, you know, Wesley obviously is going to be trying to destroy Pet Turtle's base. That's just how they go. But, yeah, Pet Turtle... I said, they're, they're clearly really concerned about e-stalling, and... I'm not sure I agree. At the same time, they aren't really building a whole lot right now, so that is going to be a bit of a problem, not for the reasons they're worried about. That is, excess might be a problem if they don't, you know, go in and start building caretakers or building some extra workers in the factory. Wesley, on the other hand, ooh, getting rid of a little dart that was scouting around. Wesley, on the other hand, does have this slightly larger metal income is going to need to start building up some extra production in the factory. And there's the caretaker right there. So Wesley, starting out with a little bit of a stronger economy, starting with a little bit stronger production. Pet Turtle, on the other hand, is being considerably more aggressive. Not what I was expecting. As I mentioned, I thought they'd be playing more defensive, but it looks like Pet Turtle will indeed try to go in and actually try to do a fair bit of damage. They're coming in with four Scorchers, one Dart. If they go in now, they might be able to actually get rid of this frontline force from Wesley. I think Pet Turtle knows that it's coming, and... Yeah, they do. They didn't know that the second one coming in, but that's fine. Wesley's forces are suddenly out of position, and that is going to be able to kill off one of the... Ooh, very, very quickly be able to deal some damage to the first one. The second one is... Or the second wave is going to retreat, regroup. Yeah, Wesley able to not do a whole lot. Pet Turtle able to defend quite effectively just because Wesley's forces were somewhat separated. So at this point, Pet Turtle just making sure that Wesley is not building over to the right side of the map, which does make sense. I mean, that is... That is a pretty obvious way for Wesley to go, but they haven't bothered to actually do that yet. Much more concerned about conquering the bottom, the south of the map. And at this point, it looks like Petrol is going to be in a bit of an awkward position. Wesley coming in and not actually finding it, surprisingly enough. I was expecting Wesley to come in here and start taking care of these Scorchers, but no. Wesley instead decides to turn around, realizing there's 
far fewer units in Pat Turtle's base. These courses should be able to do a fair bit of damage, and that is not happening. Again, Wesley managing very little in terms of aggression. Pat Turtle, in, on the other hand, is starting to get to the point where they are nearly accessing, but they're doing okay. However, Wesley has had a much stronger production this entire time. They are starting to expand over the eastern side of the map, and or at least starting to check the eastern side of the map. It looks like they're very clearly setting up to expand. I mean, this this mason right here in the southeast, that's got to be going over to the eastern side of the map. But at this point, Pet Turtle is coming in here, and unfortunately, one of the scorches was too far in front, goes down very quickly, and that is kind of unfortunate, all things considered. On the other hand, on the northern side of the map, we do have a bit of aggression coming in from Wesley, actually managing to find something. A little bit of damage in there, mostly just finding scouting. At the same time, though, there are several Scorchers coming from further south on the map, and those should be able to actually deal significantly more damage, and indeed, get rid of Dart for free. The Commander actually- ooh, this Commander will be able to jump away, but these- these Scorchers- why are they not going for it? This is a free Commander kill! Come on! No! This Scorcher- Scorcher set is not going to be able to get in here. The Commander is going to live. The Scorchers, however, are regrouping with some Fencers. They might be able to do some damage. At the same time, there's the counterattack from Pet Turtle, getting pretty quickly just- destroyed. Not even managing to get a metal extractor to their name. Just two Scorchers donated to Wesley. Pet Turtle is going to be in a bit of a tough spot right now. Oh, hey, Lori. Lori's showing up in chat. Old old hat player. Hi, Lori! How's it going? That's going to be weird for the people watching on YouTube. But, hey, people watching on Twitch? Hi, you. Hi, Lori! Anyway, Fencers. I'm not... Really sure this is gonna go in Pet Turtle's favor. I mean, Wesley's got the Scorchers; they can come in, start wiping the Fencers. I kind of wish that Pet Turtle had gone for a Dart with this set, just to, just in case the Scorchers come in. You know, slows them down, lets the Fencers do more work. But instead, we aren't seeing that at all. Scorchers just come in here and don't really manage to do all that much, unfortunately. Fencers coming in, further reinforcements from Pet Turtle, which I think is gonna be fine. But Wesley, there they are. Expanding over the eastern side of the map. Pet Turtle will have seen that. Well, we'll see that. They had the dart there. So Pet Turtle knows. But at this point, I'm not sure if Pet Turtle realizes that Wesley isn't that much further ahead. Actually, right now, Pet Turtle is in a great position if they start reclaiming. Like, just send the commander or workers down here. This reclaim field is free. I mean, 300 metal reclaim, and you can use all of it. I mean, there's 30 metal per second going into the factory. There's, of course, the mason building further things. There's a bunch of energy in Pet Turtle's base and that's actually providing quite a bit of overdrive at this point as long as pet turtle can hold the line they should be fine but the problem right now is that wesley is doing a great job destroying everything pet turtle sends at them so i'm not entirely confident that pet turtle is going to be able to get through this without losing basically all their army before their production can really kick in raptor hover coming in here and able to do a fair bit of damage or will be able to do some damage but it's just a question of numbers at this point it's not a matter of unit types wesley has a much larger army than pet turtle that is going to be a problem it's just it's been an attrition battle. That's been really what it's come down to. The, it's been a game of attrition. It's been, you know, 1,200, 1,500 metal. Wesley has killed twice as many things as Pet Turtle has. That's really what it's coming down to. I kind of wish Pet Turtle would regroup these forces, get these Ravagers into one army, and or one squad, and then assault. Even then, I'm not sure that'll actually work out, though. I feel like the Fencer's just going to destroy everything that's being sent in. Pet Turtle's going to need several more Ravagers and, fence, and Rippers, but they really don't have the time to build them Going as best they can, with proper positioning, this might work out. The first Scorcher causing a lot of issues. The Fencers will be able to be... Will be able to just get rid of all these Ravagers. There's hardly any threat. I mean, the Ravagers are coming in, starting to get rid of some of the Fencers, but one of the Ravagers has gone down. Second Fencer will be able to go... Will be able to just get rid of all this stuff. I mean, these Fencers... I don't know. The Fencers are actually having a bit of a hard time. Good movement from the Ravagers, pushing the Fencers around, making it a little bit harder for them to actually get in position, but... The Ravagers do go down. However, that does buy enough time for Pet Turtle to build up enough Ravagers and Rippers to wipe out the rest of the army, leading to a bit of a stalemate. Wesley still ahead quite a lot by attrition and does have a second army coming in, which is going to be the major problem. But at the very least, Pet Turtle has managed to get their production going. They've gotten enough of an army that they can at least drive Wesley's, Wesley's assault to a halt. And they have the reclaim coming in. So with that, it will be a lot easier to build up more forces. Of course, the only thing is, how much is that reclaim going to actually come in before the next army comes in? And the answer is actually not too little. Pet Turtle coming in with their commander as well to help defend. But the Ravagers are just doing fine. Like, they are getting in there. They are dying, yes. But they're kind of going one to one of the Fencers. Not the most efficient trade. But at least it does get rid of the Fencers. It does stop some of these forces from coming in. But Wesley is still kind of winning out when it comes to attrition. It's still 2,000 metal ahead. And 
it's with Wesley getting more and more metal, it's going to be a big deal. The only thing is right now, Wesley doesn't have as much energy. They are making that up, but Pet Turtle right now is in a much better position to actually build up anything. They can build up their their reclaim, they can build up their metals, metal production. They have a lot of reserve energy, even if they get over with their they get over energy income with metal income, it's still going to be fine. The only problem right now is that they could use another caretaker or two, or send one of these masons back, help out the factory, and then have that just use all this metal, because Pet Turtle is about to excess, even though they have way more metal coming in. Pet Turtle, you are excessing! You are accessing right now! I realize there's a two minute delay, so they can't say it, but no, you are accessing right now, and that's going to be a problem. Wesley, on the other hand, they've just been expanding a lot, quite, quite safely. I mean, they've been building up not as much energy as they need, but there has still been that expansion. And I should switch over to Dominatrix on top of that. The fencers, fencers and rippers will help, but the Dominatrixes are going to completely turn this around. The, oh, is Petrol, the Petrol's commander's not going to be captured. I don't, I don't think I've seen a commander get captured, actually. That would be new. Ah, unfortunately the Ripper does go down. The Dominatrix does basically do its job. I mean, that is the big thing Dominatrix does. It takes over units, and then the other units have to kill their former comrade. So that becomes a problem. I mean, that becomes a really big problem that has to be dealt with almost immediately. Otherwise, everything's going to fall apart. So at this point, I would rather see Pet Turtle come in here with a larger army. Like, hold the line. Do what you can against all this. Get maybe a bunch of Darth and Scorchers. Just help get rid of these Dominatrices. Because at this point, the Dominatrix, it's just going to be a big attrition sink. That's all that's going to end up happening. Uh. So, with that, a stinger going to take into A stinger! No! No! You're still building it! Uh, get away from there! Okay, there we go. Yeah, I mean, it's the one thing. I mean, I don't think units can actually tell the difference between a Dominatrix unit and a unit that belongs to their opponent, as far as priority targeting. Because really, the Dominatrix should take priority just because the Dominatrix, if it dies, the unit is returned. Ooh, but those Dominatrix were distracted by the commander. And so that's one of them down. Another one is going to be going down fairly shortly. Or possibly, I don't know. This army of Dominatrixes from Wesley, kind of their thing, really. That is becoming a major problem. Again, the attrition actually was turning around for Pet Turtle. And it looks like that may still remain the case, just considering Pet Turtle has a much more production than Wesley right now. Wesley's got 41 in the factory, Pet Turtle's got 50, and Pet Turtle is reclaiming a bunch alongside the energy they got from building the fusion plant and the overdrive that provides as well. Pet Turtle is way ahead in terms of actual production capacity. They're just behind in terms of what they're managing to do with it. At this point, the attrition is in their favor. It's really a matter of time. If the Dominatrices go down, this could actually be game. This seriously could be game. Like, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to play out that way, but it does look like it. As long as Pet Turtle can maintain that production and actually keep their units alive in the face of Dominatrices, which I really like the use of the Fencers too, by the way. That's, that is brilliant. Get the Fencers in. We should see a switch over to Scorchers, though, to help deal with that. But no, in fact, we're seeing a switch over to Rippers, which also is... I mean, it's not a bad idea. Normally, I would disagree with that. But because the Dominatrices are taking all the fire, the Rippers do have time to get in. However, that is not going to be enough. The Rippers were still a good choice for the follow-up Scorchers, which... I'm surprised Pet Turtle's going for follow-up Scorchers. I would have expected follow-up Ravagers, but instead, follow-up Scorchers are the way we're going to go. So given that, I kind of expect that Pet Turtle is going to be somewhat stymied once the army is forced to actually fight. Like, Wesley's army, once they have to stand and fight at their base, I think they can get rid of Pet Turtle's army. Just by composition, the Dominatrices are going to be distracting the Fencers and causing the Fencers to turn on themselves. That gives the Rippers time to get in, and that's exactly what they're doing. With that, the Rippers are able to get in, wipe out all the Fencers, and... Pet Turtle, their offense has been stopped. They are still going to be bringing in a follow-up army, but I I would rather they bring in Ravagers. The use of Scorchers and Darth is not making sense in the face of all these Rippers. Dummies, yes. Makes perfect sense. Distracts the Dominatrices, but Rippers are just having a field day. So with that, I kind of expect to see... No, I expect to see no change. Scorcher, Dart, Ripper... Sorry, Scorcher, Dart, Fencer... And that's turning things around. Pet Turtle has burned most of the reclaim that they had. They basically have nothing that's uncontested right now. Wesley, they haven't gone for the reclaim yet. They could. They do have the energy to actually make use of it for these two masons. They have, to, they have the caretakers as well, so Wesley would not access if they went for that. But at the same time, they aren't bothering. They are ahead economically. Pet Turtle was expanding over to the north, but has been losing metal extra just to Wesley's commander consistently. So I really wish that Pet Turtle had gone in with Ravagers. Had they had Ravagers instead of Scorchers, 
this army would have been destroyed. I get that the Dominatrices were a big threat, but the Fencers counter the Donnies. You don't have to worry about them anymore. All you have to worry about is what happens with the other forces that Wesley sends to support the Donnies. In this case, the Rippers. The Fencers can take care of them, no problem. Ooh. Phoenix is coming in, wiping out Mason very efficiently, too. Second Mason, unfortunately, does not go down, but that's fine. Those those Phoenixes can repair or rearm. Ooh. Hang on. The commander being heavily targeted as well. Missed that. My bad. One of the Phoenixes actually could go and finish off the commander. This Phoenix, you have a job to do. Or you could have a job to do. I mean, the commander is almost dead, so that's going to be fairly important. But yeah, for now, there it is. There. Is it? No, maybe, maybe not. Hard to say. No, more... More Phoenix attacks in the main army. I do I do like this approach. I mean, Pet Turtle did have a lot of money to work with. They were able to get in quite a lot as far as actual efficient use of cash. But the question is, how much is that actually going to affect anything? And I'm not really sure. This is still a giant army of Ravagers running into a giant... Kind of a small army of fencers. Slowly trying to get rid of the forces, but Wesley is just way too beefy as far as their army. Like, yes, the numbers don't really say it, but the thing is... Pet Turtle does not have a ground army. They have something of an air army, which is helping, but it's not really doing enough. And quite frankly, that assault that West, that Pet Turtle did on Wesley, that Wesley managed to deflect, that was just too much. That did way too much damage to actually be useful in the long term. So ultimately, this is going to be a problem. And there is Pet Turtle just getting their base completely wiped out by Wesley. I don't... I don't know. Maybe they've got something up their sleeve, but I seriously doubt there's any easy way out of this. It looks like... Pet Turtle, able to defend reasonably well, but losing a bunch of their production. Wesley, with a follow of Fencer Force coming on top of that. And Pet Turtle losing their fusion plant as well. That was a huge part of how they are able to avoid Metal Excess. This factory is pretty well doomed. It might not actually go down? No, oh, it's hard to say. No, the factory is definitely dead. And with that, Pet Turtle is probably going to throw in the towel. Wesley's commander managed to survive, got the hacksaws up. I, I do kind of wish one of the Ravens had gone in and killed the commander because... A lot of what Pet Turtle has economically, at least as far as outside of the base, like, it's on the eastern side of the map. Wesley's commander is threatening that. If Wesley's commander had died, then really Pet Turtle could have gone at their leisure to take it out. But no, Pet Turtle indeed throws in the towel, and that is going to be game one of the first bit of the Swiss bracket. It was an interesting play. I mean, it, it was a fairly even game, as expected. Pet Turtle unfortunately just did not manage to maintain army value as you can see they never had an advantage army value wise they did have a good push and i think if they had gone for ravagers instead of scorchers they would have been able to beat wesley i think wesley would have just lost the rippers the dominations were going down to the fencers the rippers would have gone down to the ravagers and at that point it would have just been a e pretty easy sweep into Pe into wesley's base but because wesley had the rippers and pet turtle was going for scorchers and darth as a way of basically getting into the way of dominatrices Despite the fact that that was redundant and was being countered by the Rippers, which, good thinking on Wesley's part, because that is the way to counter Dominatrices in a kind of just throw chaff at them way, is you just throw darts and scorchers, let those get captured. They're not a big deal cost-wise, but you put throwing Rippers there, and they don't even, the, the scorchers and, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the scorchers and darts don't even get in to do enough damage. But again, the fencers were doing all the damage needed to actually deal with it. So at this point, that is going to be it. That's just how it goes. You I mean, when you can go in, you got to be careful what unit types you're using. And also know what units you're using and what effect they have. And in this case, it was just fencers kind of beat dominatrices. Anyway, that was that. So we, I think, might be moving on to another game. I'm not 100% sure because this first game wasn't the shortest game. And usually it's just a matter of whether or not the other games are done. Let's see. It looks like we have... Well, other games that are running. So let's see. What do we have in the bracket right now? This point, Manor 12, Uncast, Exploit, Manor 12 is right, Uncast, Exploit, 400, Cat Lady. They are still ongoing. So I'm going to switch over to one of those. Oops. Ah, there we go. I'm going to switch over to one of those... And let's see, I think the best one. Well, if our cat lady's been running the longest, that's Rose Ripper. Let's try a different one. Let's try. Okay, so you're going to do Manu 12 versus Israelite on Shifting Sands. So that's. Let's see. It's, it's still. 
It's been going for about 17 minutes. I'm not sure it's not going to end by the time I get in there. But we'll find out. I mean, for all I know, it will. I mean, it's, it is, to me, a likely thing. Because we are talking about something that's kind of... It's kind of quick. It's kind of easy to deal with. So, let's go do that! Assuming it's still running by the time I get in. That's the one thing about doing this this way, where I do one game and then there's other remaining games, I switch over to those, is that it's possible I just run into a game, and it has happened, where I run into a game and it's just done. Yeah, alright. Let's get this loaded. Or try. Apologies to the game. Okay, game audio will come in. Sorry, let's... Anyway, let's get into the game. Let's... Alright, so we have Anthbots coming from Isaride, and Mana 12 has gone for light vehicles as well. Rovers. So this map is one of those maps that you can basically play anything, and we have Isaride taking over the center quite rapidly with the Anthbots, but at this point, Mana 12 contesting that way too heavily for Isaride to deal with. Isaride coming into the side, and I realize I should have icons on. Fix that for the next game. But Mana 12 will be coming in with a very strong score for sort of the north side of the map. And also getting rid of the factory right away. Isaride, do they have any backup factories? Not at the moment. It looks like Isaride able to get rid of the Geo Plant on Revenge. So at the very least, Mana 12 is not unsurmountably ahead. The second Amphibot factory has been built by Isaride. They are able to survive that, get the Grizzlies in there, and possibly get rid of some of these. Yeah, definitely rid of some of these Scorchers. Very strong army will be following up as a revenge. But at the same time, there's the commander, or not, the factory kill off a, a bunch of more Ravens. Not managing to survive beyond that, though. At the same time, the Grizzly coming in here, thanks to the lack of Ravens, is having an easy-ish time, but not able to do all that much damage. Same time, the Anglers come in, but are getting destroyed by Mana 12. So, Mana 12 looks like in a very advantageous position, but Israel has been holding on amazingly well. That's kind of the thing I'm noticing right now, is that Israel is just not losing out on anything. They have the factory, they keep rebuilding the factory, but they never actually managed to take anything either. And there's the factory gone for the third time! How in the world? But no, it, there it goes. And another factory will likely be built up. Again, there's another Ampod factory. I mean, this thing, Israel has a reasonably strong economy to work with and a lot of reclaim to take. But Mana 12 has been just pressing this entire game. Israel has been on defense and nothing else. We might get another breakout here, though. A bunch of sco scallops have been built alongside several ducks. As, you know, current ducks are actually good. And that's going to be reasonably effective, but... Of course, at the same time, there's still more and more forces coming from Mana 12. But Mana 12, however, looks like they are... They lost their commander. Not a bad thing. The north side's going to be much easier for Ezerite to take and hold at this point without the commander there and a whole lot of defenses. However, those stingers are still going to be a problem should they be attempted. The main problem, though, is, of course, the fact that, really, Mana 12 cares about the south, and the south is being taken handily. Ezerite should be at least able to hold the line reasonably long, but it's just a matter of time, honestly. Like, sooner or later, Ezerite is going to be running out of forces. They're going to be running out of anything they can build. This is, again, defensive. And they're fighting in the back lines. Claw's coming in here as well. Or, Badger's coming in here as well. Is that Claw's? Yes. And that's just distracting everything. Again, though, multiple Ravens coming in here, helping get rid of the front lines. And Israel just decides, you know what, that's it. I can't deal with that. So, Mana 12 takes the game after 20 minutes log, of which we saw in about a three-minute fast-forward. Because that is how this game do. But hey, I managed to actually see what was going on. So that was the last game that was being played of that series, or of that round. So we will be moving on to round two. As Mana 12 takes a game against Izzeride. Paul Bello winning against Kingstad. Looks like we have... Let's look at our top. So Wesley, Uncast, Malric, Kingstad, FFC, and Cat Lady all won their games. And Mana 12 all won their games. While at the same time, we have... Oops. Same time, Izzeride, Iser Space T, Paul Bello, Catastrophe 400, Petrol, and Exploit are going to be facing each other. Basically, I mean, Swiss, this is a Swiss tournament. Of course, how Swiss tournaments work is that everyone faces people who are reasonably close in their overall rating. So, for that, or their standings, rather. So, at this point, with round one done, we will be seeing just all the winners face each other and all the losers, all the, yeah, all the people who won their matches and all the people who lost their matches 
and then there'll be one pair of people where it's one person who won, one person who lost in the next round. But we'll be getting back to that after a short break, since I really over-explained the hell out of that. And Anyway, getting back to that after a short break, so stay tuned. We will be back with round two of the March 2019 1 0K1v1 tournament in a few minutes. It shouldn't take too long. <laughs> 